back the uh, German rider and uh, Quinziato has also been uh, dropped out of the back Quinziato dropped from the back of the peloton Italy though with uh, four or five riders up there and I'm presuming that uh, Nibali is one of them maybe Viviani still all the favorites are there Australians uh, Gerrans and Matthews also well placed near the front Tyler Farrar doing his best to stay out in front as long as he possibly can well he'd like to take those cobbles first but I don't think he's even gonna get that uh, privilege because they're bearing down behind him now the Dutch on the right it works so so hard all day any sign of Ian Stannard well, has he got anything left to give Dylan van Baal still in there and I think I think uh, Tom de Moulin is about fourth in line among the uh, the Dutch riders Swift was still in there before as well but no sign of him either and you see the Dutch are just riding it like a full-on field sprint to get to this corner because they know it's all important, not necessarily to win, but not to lose. Germany trying to put themselves in a really good position. Australia as well, through the middle of the road in the white with the yellow and green bands around the chest. And the French coming through in the middle. Well, Italy gone a little bit early. They're decimated now all over the road as they turn onto the cobbles. Here we go for one final time with four kilometers to go. The front of the race and now launching himself up the climb. Is that Stiebar going towards the front here? It is. It's Denik Stiebar who we're talking about before this race and what an attack. He's already opened up a gap of 10 meters. Doesn't sound like a lot, but somebody's got to close it. Well, Stiebar's really going for it and John Dagenkolb is right on his wheel. So two of the big favorites. That looks like Greg van Avermaet is leading the chase in third place, the Belgian rider over the top of Libby Hill. And now on their wheel, I'm wondering if that was Boas and Hagen from Norway, perhaps. I think it was. Uh, so as, as expected, this was the softening up. They really hurt everybody, put the hammer down. But it's right now that the attacks are going to matter. Going into that second cobbled section is where these attacks are going to uh, be made to stick. Well, it was interesting there that Degenkolb sensed that danger straight away. Stiebar, a rider that he just could not afford to allow to escape at that point. But yep. the, the Dutch still involved and one of the Dutch riders attacking. This was the time to attack between the climbs. And Degenkolb having to do some chasing, not keen on that, looking behind him. But it's probably going to just stay neutralised now. So it's who carries the fatigue into that next climb. It's the next attacks. I think are the ones that have the best chance of sticking if it doesn't stick there then it's likely to come down to a sprint I think well several of the riders we were expecting to see towards the front at the end of the race is certainly there in Degenkolb, Stibar and Van Avermaet but there are others as well And it's very, very quiet in the finishing straight outside our commentary position. Everybody waiting with bated breath, looking hear at the big drop. screen. You could hear a pin drop outside, apart from the commentator in the street. And this is it now. And who is it that's taken a lead onto those cobbles? It's all about the speed now. Well, it's Greg Van Avermaet, I think, who has launched an attack here. And one of the Australian riders has gone with him. Well, very, very strong move. You can see the acceleration there into the slipstream. And is this Sagan coming to the front? It's Peter Sagan who hits the front. Unbelievable. Sagan 60th. has been quiet throughout the race, and now, when it really matters, Sagan has made his attack and the bid for World Championship glory, and I'm sure that's Van Avermaet on his wheel. Well, I don't think it's enough at the moment. He's uh, going to take at least two riders with him that are going to get back on the wheel. And that was a huge effort he made to uh, get that gap. He's got another climb to go, of course. Well, yet again, Sagan looks as though he's going to put himself in the right position to contest the finish. But can he make it count this time? He's trying to recover, doing everything he can here to get some, uh, get some oxygen around in circulation before he hits that final climb. And he's still got a gap here. This is a remarkable ride. Certainly doesn't lack for bike handling skills. Got that bit covered, he's got a 30 metre gap. He isn't necessarily the person you'd expect to win in a lone move like this, but he's committed to it. Just to say, the other two riders who are chasing him, Greg van Avermaet from Belgium and Edvold Boasenhagen of Norway, those three red riders have broken away from the field here with just over a kilometre and a half remaining, but Sagan is suddenly in the box seat. Well, he's just got to drag up to the uh, kilometre to go, Mark, for the last time, and he'll go up Governor Street, 8%. 
that will drag up to 600 meters to go and it doesn't flatten out to the line so a massive solo move by him well it doesn't sound like much does it 1.4 kilometers to go to the finish but it is still a long long way and the chase is on, but Sagan from Slovakia leads the way. Van Avermaet and Boas and Hagen behind you, but there are other riders as well. Those two are messing about, and that could be a real problem for them because they can't wait long, that's for sure. Sagan fully committed. Now, will this be the time that at last he doesn't finish second? He takes the big one. A classy rider, so, so deserving, but it's still very much all to play for it's cost him a huge amount to get himself into this position as he goes under the kilometer to go flag well we weren't sure with peter sagan what his form was because he only lasted for eight stages of the uh for welter before he was uh, knocked off his bike by a vehicle and couldn't continue in the race well we've got our answer now his form is pretty good is his form going to hold up though for the next 800 meters enough to deliver him the world title because they're all bearing down now leading the chase and when he turns left into the finishing straight he will still have 680 meters to go Greg van Avermaet leads the chase there are still plenty of others fighting hard for this gold medal what has Sagan got left in the tank as he comes to the top of Grosvenor Street oh you can see the pain etched on his face what a finish we're going to have to this race Peter Sagan now into the finishing straight I think he can do it it's, so, so, it's going to be ever so close but he saved something he got himself a big buffer the charging behind him but I think he can do it well they're leading the charge now after Peter Sagan they can see him but he can see the finishing line in front of him so many times second so many times third but is he going to win the big one here the world title it's almost within his grasp he can smell it it's almost there he's got one hand on the rainbow jersey one hand on the gold medal he's just got to hang on as Sagan comes up the finishing straight with 200 meters to go wisely he tries to sprint out of the saddle he's got almost nothing left the tank is almost empty but I think he's done the job he's done enough and with 50 meters to go he will have time to celebrate and this will be a very popular victory in the world of cycling because one of the sport's great showmen has landed the world title Peter Sagan from Slovakia is a world champion and Michael Matthews from Australia takes second place on the line and Sagan timed that effort to perfection he left it late but he timed it perfectly and Sagan is the big big winner well what a ride we didn't see him for the entire race and so so it was almost law of averages he's been second so many times this year that it just had to work out for him you can't be that close and that good but committing himself that far out as well absolutely delighted well it was gutsy and it will be extremely popular among many bike fans around the world do you not think chris I think so. I mean, we've watched him. He's entertained us through the Tour de France, through many, many races this year. And it was uh, such a surprise move for him to make so far out. And I thought he was going to have uh, some company there, but he just distanced them on the descent, had the confidence to get down on his bike. Don't pedal, just make myself small and try and recover. And after an effort like that, a gargantuan effort from Sagan, this is where he launched his bid for victory on the penultimate climb, having hidden, safely tucked away in the peloton throughout this long, tortuous day in the saddle. It was about 60th position the previous lap going up Libby Hill and fighting his way up but he got himself positioned beautifully accelerated onto Van Avermaet's wheel as they approached the cobbles and as we've been talking about all week he carried his speed onto the stones and no one else can do anything until they get to the top gold medal then for Peter Sack